So Nomad Sculpt's got a new version, and in that new version, you'll find this, which is subsurface scattering. And if you follow this video, you'll be able to uh, get light pushed through the skin of your models. And you can get this kind of effect that makes your uh, sculpts look much more realistic. So I'll do it in our usual way of doing a very basic example. And then we'll move on to something like how we used it on this old head that we did on one of our YouTube videos some while ago. Okay, so first things first, let's have a look at a basic scene with subsurface scattering. So we'll take the new scene. So all I've done is gone file new. And bear in mind, a lot of Nomad has changed with these last few versions. And you may not even have this version yet because it's in beta currently and it's about to be released. But if you have got it, you'll be able to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. And hopefully by the time you see this video, it will be fully out anyway. So first of all, we've got a new scene and it's just a sphere. And that's more than enough for what we want to do. We're going to use this as a head and we're going to test the subsurface scattering effect on that. So let's first of all, let's just make it a uh, skinish kind of colour. We'll take the roughness down and we don't need any metalness and we'll do force paint. So we've now got some sort of uh, a pinkish uh, skin colour. That's all we need. Now, something to know about um, uh, Nomad is, is the scale. So this is very, very tiny. So I'll put a grid on and it's that that is almost in the region of a, a, a couple of millimetres, believe it or not. So always with subsurface scattering, I find it best to make sure it's bigger. Now you can do this just an arbitrary way, like so just make it a bit bigger. Um, if you do want to test it and you want to do it exact, then go down here and use measure and you can measure across like so. So that's now 17 mil that way. And if you want to do it exactly, snap it and do it across like that. And you can see it's actually 18 and a half mil. But we're not too worried about that. We, 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 we know we wanted it bigger than the one or two mil that it comes in as a default. So we're going to take that. That's our head done and dusted. So what we want to do now is we want to duplicate it. So come up to the scene. We'll hit the little three dots and we'll go clone. And then we'll go back to our gizmo, which is now on our uh, menu, which is great. And we'll just bring that smaller and thinner like so and that is now believe it or not an ear so i'm making it as simple as i as i can we don't need the grid now because we've uh, we've established scale and then simply just duplicate that and we'll go clone bring it across and now we've got two ears you could have done symmetry up here of course so we've now got two ears and we've got a head so what do we do now well first of all if we light this first of all we've got a an environment light and we'll go dark with that so we've got a really dark light that we turn right down if you watch any of my earlier videos about lighting you'll always see i start with a very very dark environment like that and then we bring the lights in so we'll just add light and this is the crucial bit so we're going to bring the light all the way to the back and we're going to check what that light is so we tap on it and it says spotlight or it can say spot point or directional and we need normally we do spotlights for most of our stuff, but we want to change it to tap it again and go directional. And that means it doesn't matter where that is in the scene, it, but it does matter how you orient, orientate it. So I'll put it to the back just because it's logical and we'll make sure that it's pointing to the back of the head like so. So this arrow here, this arrow, the white arrow is the direction and we want it pointing directly at the back of the head. So let me just bring it around like so. And you can see there now, it's right at the back. And then also what we want to do is we want to crank that light right up. So crank the intensity up to a silly level. And you can actually just make it a little bit uh, orangey or pinky as well, if you want to give it a little bit of a, a glow on the back of the head like that. Now that's what we're faced with, with Nomad before this new, um, feature so no light is passing through those ears so let's just talk a little bit about what subsurface scattering is so basically subsurface scattering is where light passes through a, a medium or, or any kind of surface and it scatters as it hits it so a good example would be your hands so it would be if you put a torch underneath your hands the light comes through and you're seeing it as bright red in between the cracks and that's because you're seeing the blood 
the, the, and, the, and the flesh and the bone, etc., it, wherever it's thinner, so on the edges, it's diffusing the light and, and scattering it inside. So you can also see it in things like resin. So here you can see it on this dragon's head that's been 3D printed. And that's very similar to, say, for example, uh, a candle where, where light passes into a candle and diffuses into the, to the wax. And you can also see it here on this little 3D printed dragon wing. You can see that the light is going through the wing. And, and, and we, we have to think about that a lot when we're 3D printing in full colour. So we actually use this plate so that this is a... Uh, a 3D printed plate that's got several different depths down the sides and it's got several different colour ranges as well. So if you, as you can see, as I'm moving the light around, I can see how deep um, uh, a skin to make while I'm sculpting with a colour. So basically, if I want to do an ear, which is what we're about to do, I would say, right, it's going to be about two millimetres with this type of material when the light can bleed through like that. So that's how they're, they're real world examples of how I, I use this technology. We're doing this on an iPad and we're doing it with um, a piece of software that's never had this feature before. So that, that's what this is all about. So at the moment, if I wanted to brighten up the front or show any light coming through, I would fake it by putting another light in. So I would actually go add light, bring that to the front. I would make that a spotlight now, like so. And then you can angle it and move it wherever you want. And I would say maybe push that onto the ear. So if you followed my videos for a while, you might have seen me highlighting parts of the body uh, or parts or parts of a model like this. Um, with a light or, or, or with a, a spotlight like this and again if I wanted to fake the subsurface scattering I would I would make it a, a color like that but that's just faking it that's just a, basically a torch at the front so that's no use we'll move that completely out of the way so what we do do now is we can change this and we can make these materials a subsurface scattering material so we'll click on the head and we'll come up here so you're in material tab and you hit subsurface and nothing major happened. It changes a bit around the top. We'll go to this ear and we'll do the same. We'll change that to subsurface and we'll do this one as well. And you can already see while I'm doing it that we've seen a change already. Now, if you hadn't have made your model bigger, you'd get a very different effect because the thing that really matters here is the depth. So as these ears get thicker, you can see in the middle there, they get darker and that's what subsurface scattering will do in these kind of models so for example the head you can see that there's no light traveling through the head because it's a solid mass now on the edges you might get a bit of it and if i was to go on the head and if i was going to go say for example use a move tool and we will have symmetry on and we'll just pull this out look what happens there so you've got light passing through and getting basically using the light from the background so we made it slightly red and we've got a reddish pinky color in in the skin wherever we're going thin you can see that it's it's adding you um th that kind of um light effect where the light scatters look at the front there's nothing there because the light can't get through to this but if i was to start here and bring it down there is a point where that light the vector of the light starts to hit down here so you've got to start to understand on your model how to use this. So one way to do it would be to merge them all together. So let's take those spheres. Uh, so all of them are together and we'll, we'll bring them together with a voxel merge, quite a high resolution because we want it smooth and hit voxel merge. Notice if you're from an older version, these menus are slightly different and we'll cover that over the next few weeks and months um, just to make sure you're au okay fait with all of this. So if I go to move tool now and just watch what happens as I move this middle bit here. As I pull it back, the back surface and the front surface are getting closer together. So see how the light is coming through more? When you go too far, one's passing through the other and then that's when you'll get an error. So if I just undo that and you can see, let's just see, bring it all the way back until it crosses into itself. Well, it's not quite doing it, but, but basically you don't go too far because what you don't want is this back popping out of this front because it will, it will obviously cause you an error. But what you might want to do is make sure that this surface is very close to the back surface to give where light really does shine through. 
um, that's on the thinnest part in the middle of the ear here. So we'll use symmetry. We want object center and we want to left to right mirror it. Yes, and there you go. We're back, back on symmetry now. So now if we go back to move and we use the, the or use these really thin bits here to make these crazy big ears and we'll just bring the front out as if we're going to sculpt him like that and you can see it's not affecting it at all so we would have to light that nose in a, in a different way because there's no light passing through but those ears don't look quite right so now you go in with your normal way and you can sculpt them up or you can even just use something like for example uh, a good one now would be inflate so what you can do is you can add that volume back around those edges and you'll see very carefully how where it's going thicker, the light isn't coming through. And that's a good way of, of, of doing it. So just by adding that thickness there, you can see where it's where it's working. Now the scene's too dark, I know that, but by just doing these few little things, you can understand your subsurface scattering and how it how it's working. Now, if you bring your lights back up, so your environment light, bring it back up you can then affect that and you can see that you'll get a really nice effect. It looks terrible from the back because it's really bright, but you're not trying to do that. You're trying to get this nice glowing light through the ears or through any thin areas like we've, we've seen here. If you do like a, an alien bump on there like that, you'll get a really nice scattering through the thin bits. Okay, so let's switch over to a, um, a scene that's already built and where it's using subsurface scattering. So this is one I did quite a few months ago when I, I was um, uh, uh, really cranking out a lot of these Nomad videos. And I've got a lot of things set on here because it's making it look very, very illustrative. So what I've got on in here, post process, is I've got the uh, ambient occlusion on. It's giving me some of that nice, deep, deep shadows. I've got depth of field on as well. I've got tone mapping on. I've got um, curvature on, which is giving me those really nice illustrative black lines. In fact, I don't even need that for this one. Let's let's do without that. I've got a vignette on that's making it dark around the edges. And that's they're all the main things that I've got on for now. But what I don't have on and what's not working at the moment is subsurface scattering. So basically tap on the head, go up to your same as we did with the test one. And we just tap on the subsurface. And there you go, straight away you can see the benefit of doing this. Let's just make it easier for you to see by turning off the depth of field. And you can see there now, I'll roll the light round. And that's exactly the same as I've just shown you with the, um, with the test head, the temp head. But you can see there, the light is passing through those thin areas. And with the, with the combination of the front light, which will be a spotlight, so you might want to put two spotlights at the front for very specific highlights or highlights in the eye. And then you'll want a directional light at the back to throw this really strong light that causes or affects the subsurface scattering. And then you can work on the skin and you can improve the skin and, and, and stuff like that. And if you start using things like the move tool now, you can see, um, again, as I, as I showed before, the thinner you go, if I pull this right back, it'll get really thin. Um, you know, we wouldn't want to do that, but you can see, you could argue that that's too much. You know, ears on fire is not something that you that that, that, that you particularly want. Um, and also, don't forget, you can change the color of that. So that light, um, that light in the background, we you know, we, we can try different colors. Um, you can turn it off. You could change it to, uh, if, if this was a plant, for example, you might want to push some green in there and get some green light. So mix the, mix the colors of the, of the lights. And obviously you can paint the surface as well. And so, so it's going to be a combination of what you paint and, and, and what the subsurface can do. And if you're someone that knows anything about 3D rendering, then, then you'll know how complex a subject subsurface scattering is with a real time, oh, sorry, with a real, uh, like a brute force render or, or a renderer that's that's doing the the this on steroids basically this is a real time solution you'll see this in programs like uh sketchfab has it now and also in marmoset i think um marmoset toolbag so and blender uh, has it as well so this is on your ipad so i mean this is fantastic this is what we've these are the things that we've we've wanted for years so you can literally do a lot of this and and you can get some stunning effects just right here on the iPad um, without ever going to those more expensive programs or more complex programs. So yeah, there you go. That's subsurface scattering on the iPad.
So I've been away from recording for quite a while. We're getting back into it now, and there's a lot to talk about because of the new stuff that's coming with Nomad Sculpt. So I'm going to cover a lot of that over the next few weeks. So why don't you subscribe to the channel, join us, and we can, if you hit the notification bell, I can let you know when we upload new content, which is going to be back to our old routine of once a week.